Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here and today I want to help you travel smarter by reviewing this tough tested ROC 10,000 milliamp hour solar powered portable charger and we'll get to the review in just a second but this portable charger brings up with it a lot of questions about solar panels, portable solar panels in general and I want to talk about that as well. Let's start with the specs of this 10,000 milliamp hour portable battery pack. Out of the box you've got the charger and this protected USB-C cable for charging which the box says is valued at $15 but honestly like most people I think you'd prefer saving that on the cable and just not including it in the box so you save on the overall price of this portable charger which is about $64. But anyway it's there. So along the edges you've got these rubber grips with a sleek outdoorsy color combo of orange, black and gray finishes on a matte surface. You've got the flashlight on one side, to turn it on you just have to hit the power button twice and turn it on and off. Then flipping around you've got a USB-C port, two USB-A type ports, a micro USB port and yes you're able to use all the ports at once to charge multiple devices. The ROC charger is IP65 rated which means it's essentially dust proof and can handle a strong splash of water but it's not waterproof by any means. On the back there's the Xi wireless charger and of course on the opposite side the solar panels. Although the ROC power pack is large for a 10,000 milliamp hour portable charger, it's noticeably light in the hand weighing only 362 grams. And that lightness comes from the fact that this entire enclosure is not filled with battery. They've got to make space for the solar panel and the Xi wireless charger on the bottom. And if you hold it, you can, from the middle, you can see it's kind of weighted down to this side so the battery is actually on this side but to give you some context 10,000 milliamp hours is enough to charge most smartphones about two to three times over so that's about the capacity that you get at full with this charger. So let's talk about that Xi wireless charger. The convenience of this can't be overstated especially if you travel frequently. It's just incredibly useful and easy if you have a wireless charging phone not having to plug it in or mess with cables when you're at an airport or on a plane is a total game changer. Additionally you can use the ROC as a wireless charger when it's plugged in on your laptop for example for more convenience especially if you don't already have a wireless charging pad. Over to the other side the solar panel. It's got a solid matte finish and doesn't feel fragile, in fact I accidentally dropped it on pavement while filming and the charger including the solar panel hardly showed a scuff mark. In sunlight or even just bright rooms this green indicator light activates to let you know the ROC is charging though I'm not sure it's entirely showing you how much this thing is charging so I've got just one small little light here on top of the camera and if I point the solar panel to it right the green light is gonna, I don't know, it's gonna focus, but the green light is gonna activate. So the green light is on right now, so it's showing me that it's charging, but I hardly doubt that it's charging from that weak light or these weak lights from up above, especially when you consider how slow it is to charge in direct sunlight. And when it comes to the size and the capacity of this, the reason this pack is so large is for this solar panel. So the solar panel has to be large enough to effectively charge the battery inside. But wisely, what Tough Test has done here is instead of filling this up with battery and maybe making the solar panel too weak to fill up the battery, and I'll get to that in a second, they've put this Xi wireless charging coil back here. So you've got the wireless charging coil here, and you've got this solar panel as well, so you get both of those features. Now, the solar charger isn't very strong, so after about five hours in direct sunlight, it's enough to charge up a phone about 30%. So I estimate that's a little less than a thousand milliamp hours which isn't much. Most modern iPhones for example are about 2,000 milliamp hour batteries. So to give you an idea it's going to be well under a thousand milliamp hours for five hours of direct sunlight using this solar charger. So Tough Tested may have been limited by the internals of the solar panel itself and opted to go with a smaller battery and give you the Xi wireless charging because they know most people would probably be disappointed with the fact that you can't get much power out of this solar panel so they decided to mix it up and I think that was a very good call in this case. And that's because even when this thing is plugged into a 2 milliamp hour power source so if you plug it in through the cable and you charge it it's going to take about 6 hours to charge up full which is pretty normal for a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. That's about how long it's going to take. That's not a big deal but when you think about the solar charging where you're getting less than a thousand milliamp hours. So you're getting less than 10% of this battery charge if you have it five hours in direct sunlight. That's gonna be a major limitation to people and maybe put people off. But since you've got the Xi charger on the back here, that's another feature, a selling point that you have instead of the solar panel, which is very limited. Solar charging is slow and inefficient. And that's not just this tough tested solar charger, that's solar chargers in general. 
which brings us to the state of solar chargers in 2020. So there are two types of people that are going to be interested in a portable charger just in general. There are going to be the regular travelers, commuters, going to work, that kind of thing. So you just need a portable battery pack and you just need some charge because your phone doesn't last through the day, you're a heavy phone user, that kind of thing. So those are people who are on the go but probably are going to have their charged battery full and they're going to have access to electricity. The second group of people are people who are outdoorsy. So if you hike a lot, if you camp a lot, there's that group of people who might not have as much access to electricity. And for that second group, you're gonna want a portable charger because you're not gonna be able to charge up your phone quite as easily or your tablet. So you might be looking into a solar panel charger. The problem is for both groups, these solar panel chargers don't really hit the mark for either group and it puts them in kind of a tough spot right in the middle. And it makes them sort of this in-between stage, which might not be great for either type of person. I fall in the first camp of general user, mostly indoors. For most people, if you're in that group, it's where you'll be in a situation where your phone is completely dead and the portable charger is completely drained. Yes, you may have forgotten to charge both things, but in five hours in direct sunlight that you need to charge the battery, it's very likely that you'll just find a place to plug in the battery or your phone, drive home, plug into your car. There are a lot of options there, for instance. I've seen the look in most people's eyes when their phones run out of battery for five minutes and they just have to plug it in. So imagine just waiting under the sun for five hours for this thing to charge because you didn't charge up your phone properly and you didn't even bother to charge this overnight. So now you're completely out of battery and I don't think you're gonna wait in the sun for five hours. And that's just assuming that you've access to the sun for five hours straight where you can keep an eye on this thing while it's charging and also do other things without your phone like talk talk to people or something now if you're in the second group of people who hike a lot who camp a lot who are planning to be outdoors a lot you might be looking at the solar charger the problem again starts with one are you going to be charging your things overnight most campsites do have places to plug in your electronics so when you're camping you're going to plug this in overnight you're going to plug your phone in overnight Chances are, if you're a true outdoors person, if you're really outside that long, you're going to have larger battery packs, maybe solar panel or electricity based or a combination of both, but things that are large enough to charge a whole variety of stuff like your laptop as well, maybe some other items that you carry with you. So when it comes to hiking, if you're hiking, you've got, let's say, four hours of battery life on your phone. Let's just assume four hours of battery life and that you even have service. So Let's just go four hours, which is a very conservative number. You got four hours on your phone, and then this is gonna charge your phone two to three times over, right? So you've got now eight to 10 hours of phone battery power, assuming that you charge both things overnight. Now, if you're hiking or you're camping, chances are you're not gonna spend 10 hours on your phone, right? You've got some hiking to do. And if you're camping, you're probably not gonna be sitting around on your phone the entire, entire day, especially because you're probably gonna be in a place without service most likely, unless you've got some sort of wireless or satellite connection or whatever, but chances are you're not going to be on your phone for 10 hours, which puts this solar panel in a really tough spot again. And it really just leaves it for emergency situations. But hear me out on that. So those emergency situations are where you're totally out of battery on your phone and your portable charger. But now you're in this emergency situation where you have access to nothing, you don't have anything powered up and you really need a phone, maybe to make an emergency phone call or you are lost and you want your phone on so maybe there's some kind of beacon. Let's just put this into the category of serious, serious emergency. Now what you've got to do is you've got to place this in the sun for about five hours and that's assuming that you have sunlight, access to direct sunlight so you've got five hours for this out in direct sunlight that's going to get your phone up to about 30 percent which is great enough to make a phone call but you're in an emergency situation let's say you can't so you're going to leave your phone on as a beacon then how long realistically is your phone going to last so you've got this your phone is at now 20 to 30 percent let's say and now the sun has gone down because you've got your five hours of charge and we can't recharge it overnight now your phone is dead and you've got to redo this in the morning and this is the extreme emergency situation. Now, I'm not saying that this is terrible, like this would be useful to have, it's better than not having anything, but there are two things that need to happen to solar chargers for them to actually become very useful for the masses. And one, that is either make the solar chargers faster or two, make them more efficient. So let's look at those two scenarios. And this isn't just this tough test that this is all small portable solar panel chargers. They all have these limitations. So. Let's take a look at the first one, which is efficiency. 
So there are some solar panels. If you saw my extra review, you saw that that solar panel, which was licensed out to FedEx and all kinds of shipping companies, it can charge using ambient light. Now, it's not a charger. It's not designed to produce a lot of electricity, but using ambient light in your wallet, when you open your wallet and close it, or just the light that it gathers when it's sitting on a table is enough to charge that. Now, I'm not saying that a portable charger should be able to use ambient light, although that would be excellent. That would be great. But if you have this in your backpack, for example, and it's hanging off, it's not going to be in direct sunlight because the sun is most likely going to be above you when you really want to charge this thing. That's the ideal time to charge a solar panel. So when you see these ads of this thing hanging off the back of a backpack and people just charging it, you'll notice that the charger and the solar panel is facing back and down. So it's not getting direct sunlight for most of the day because the sun is going to be on top. What you really want is to face it up toward the direct sunlight and ideally kind of move it toward the sun as the day goes on and off. But let's say you're hiking and it's just there. So having the ability to charge this with ambient light. So no matter what direction this is in, maybe get it a charge, maybe use some sort of other ambient light like a campfire or something else. Maybe the bright lights of a hotel room, like when you're traveling, for example, that kind of thing that would be really useful. So now that five hour charge time is cut down by a couple hours because it's actively gathering light at all times, basically. So it's gathering more light. It's more efficient. That would be a nice benefit to one of these portable solar chargers. The second thing would be faster charging. So let's say you get five hours or 30%. That's not great, but let's say you can get a 10, 15, maybe 20% battery charge with only 15 to 30 minutes in the sun. Now we're talking about practical use for most people. So if you're on your lunch break, if you're at a cafe and you need a charge, you want to top this off, you can just place it in the sun, gather some energy while you're having your lunch or your coffee. And now you've got an emergency charge if your phone happens to die. So if this were more efficient and faster, it'd be useful for more of the masses. Now, if you are outdoors a lot, if you travel outdoors all the time, you're the type of person that already has solar powered all kinds of things then this portable charger might be very useful for you. And if you're not going to have access to electricity often, then this charger might come in handy, especially if you are really outdoors hiking and you're just not going to be plugging in a lot. But if you're going to have access to a plug at least once or twice a day, and you're going to be able to charge this thing up fully through the cable, then the solar panel doesn't really make a lot of sense. But where it does make sense is having a portable wireless charging pad. If you don't already have a wireless charging pad and you want something for your travels that can also charge your phone, then you can just place this, plug it in next to your laptop while you're working on the road or at home even, and now you've got a portable wireless charger for your phone. Very convenient and very good idea that Tough Tested added that here. But if you're just looking at this Tough Tested based on the charging power of the solar panel alone, for most, most people, this is probably not going to be a good purchase for you. And that really is the state of solar powered portable chargers in 2020. So when you compare it to something like this traditional anchor battery pack, which is 13,000 milliamp hours. So it's got a larger capacity. It's physically smaller and it costs a third of this power pack. So it's got to make you wonder whether or not this solar panel is really, really worth it for your needs. Or if you really, really, really want a portable wireless charging pad that also serves as a battery pack or whether or not you should just get one of these simple little things that's just going to get you through the day with enough power to charge your phone and your tablet and then you can just plug it in at night and start over the next day thanks for watching i'll leave a link to those chargers down in the description below and while you're down there hit the like and subscribe buttons i'll have new videos for you every week thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video chargers portable powered power the solar panel in general see 1000 blah